welcome everyone to the topic preventive measures for fire and electrical safety so the stress will be on fire and electrical and the heady mix that they pose as dangerous as it can be both a fire which has been created due to the malfunctioning of electrical equipment so let us watch this video to understand what are the measures so as usual we will be talking about the introductions definitely yes we'll talk about the fire hazards the control of fire hazard the industrial plants the extinguisher that is available will move to the electrical hazard thereof what can affect us what are the various types that are uh, possible as far as hazard electrical hazards are concerned and the prevention thereof so this is what we'll be learning in this particular video so please listen very carefully because this might actually prevent a loss a lot of devastation and probably losses of lives <clears throat> hazard is a term associated with a substance that in all likelihood is detrimental to the environment and to the lives human lives i want to say so now when we talk about environment it might lead to a lot of emissions of gases a lot of smoke a lot of pollution that can pose around it one please understand it can lead to a lot of loss of property uh, economic wealth that has been created over a period of time will vanish over a few hours of fire that can be given out there so please understand those effect all together we need to understand the hazard the terms associated with the substances then and there the likelihood to cause an injury industrial hazard on the other hand may be defined as any condition produced by any industry that may cause injuries or death to personal loss of product which i have already said it to priorly it is the loss of property the economic wealth that has been accumulated over a generations might vanish over a few hours of fire it also leads to a loss of life personal safety is at stake that is what we need to understand if we have to avoid such kind of losses such kind of injuries such kind of risk please follow this video very industrial safety or employee safety what does it refers to the protection of the workers from dangers of industrial accident definitely yes safety hazard we are talking about the toxic corrosive chemical fire explosion and personal fallings now this is what we need to understand as far as the safety hazards are concerned what will be encountered in terms of safety hazards so i again repeat any forms of chemical any forms of explosion any per, uh, any mishap with the employees might lead lead to devastating effects especially in chemical and pharma related industry so accident prevention needs systematic technical study of every aspects of the plant design and operations thereby we need to understand today industry employees definitively friendly machinery friendly equipment which can to a certain extent rectify human error or probably probably do not give enough permission to the equipment to malfunction altogether there are built in checks and balances already in places thereby so we need to understand this thing very clearly with all the materials available out here so fire and explosion hazards what does it means about it combustion may mean defined as a chemical reaction which is basically emission of light and heat with what with oxygen when we are exposing certain material they are getting oxidized and it leads to release of excessive heat probably light three factors remember three factors that are essential for any combustion is a high temperature is the availability of oxygen and the combustible material the content which actually burns around it the fuel which we are talking around here so this needs to be understood yes there is a spontaneous combustion and non explosion proof electrical equipment is the potential ignition definitely yes fire occur in industry more frequently than you can ever imagine 
probably more than the explosion or the toxic releases that comes around it nowadays you can keep on hearing that certain vehicle automatically busted into fires or four wheelers i'm talking about it definitely yes the chances of that vehicle being a cng run or an lpg run is very high one of the says that cng is compressed natural gas uh, lng is liquefied the nitrogen gas as what we are talking around it we are trying to let you be sensitized that fire is more rampant more rampant in terms of accidents rather than other scenarios of explosion toxic release and so on and so forth so basically several different forms uh, the fire manifest itself into primarily into a jet fires into a pool fires and a boiling liquid expanding vapor explosion these are the form different form that fire may manifest into with be it a jet fires pool fires boiling liquid expanding explosion talking about the control of fire and explosion fire protection provisions are applicable not only to the big pharmaceutical industry but also whether there are synthetic biological or microbiological materials available out there so need to understand that what is how does the government state takes a stand as for the regulations are concerned for the availability of fire safety or fire protection out there this is a must that we need to all together careful plant layout judicious choice of construction material can reduce fire and explosive hazards one of them being is the fire door we look at look into it hazard operation should be isolated if possible in a separate building in an isolated building itself that means we are limiting the chance of spread of fire or spread of spread of any major catastrophic things so fire resistant brick wall or reinforced concrete walls can limit the effect of explosion the roof is designed to lift easily under an explosive forces this is what we are looking into it the roof is specially designed so that it lets off very easily in cases of explosive forces possible sources of fires are reduced by eliminating ignition sources remember installation of fire alarms temperature alarms fire fighting equipment and sprinkler system must be specified in design this is what we are looking at it next thing or is all about the industrial plant the industrial plant we are talking in terms of location in terms of arrangements of building and so on and so forth we talk about the uh, fire mains hydrant hoses water hoses i am talking about it these are fire deterrent activities that are present out there the buildings we are talking about the construction material the exit the fire exit the evacuation plan the lighting the color these are all a part and parcel of the construction material so we should have adequate ventilation enough certain sanitation automatic fire prevention mechanism or the sprinkler system that we keep on talking around it the first aid has to be there the fire extinguishers equipment avoiding general machinery flammable liquids and so on and so forth this is becomes a must thing can we isolate the flammable liquids equipment can there be a fire extinguisher in places and it has to be notified the usage of the fire extinguishers to all the employees now let us classify the fire into three categories one the first category the a, a class a fires remember it is the most commonly available combustible material that we talk about it class b fires are originating from oils greases flammable liquids which probably might have further devastating effect altogether because it sticks to the body then is the class c fires originating from electrical equipment remember to put off class c fires we cannot use water water becomes very conducive to fire so we have to go for different kind of fire deterrents again i repeat ordinary ordinary combustible material consists of class a fires anything to do with oil consists of class b fires anything to do with electrical origin 
needs to be classified as fire there is an example of a fire extinguisher the soda acid extinguisher usually done for electrical fires the water gas extinguisher the foam extinguisher which is basically cutting off oxygen supply altogether this is what we are looking into as the foam ex extinguisher is concerned then we have the carbon dioxide extinguisher and the dry powder or chemical ex extinguisher that comes around it these are the various types of extinguisher as far as fire containment issues so electrical hazards we move to the next concept of electrical hazard remember electrical hazard are one of the four main hazard in construction causing serious injuries or death approximately around around three and a half um, 350 or 400 electrical related fatalities remember fatalities occur in any populated country this 350 deaths are not required are unwarranted are can be prevented from happening if we take proper precaution many a people please understand many a people do not understand the hazard of working with electrical equipment altogether or they undermine the hazard altogether so electrical switch needs to uh, is to be turned off probably the water faucet should not be at the vicinity of electrical nodes and inter nodes we need to understand the source of water the way of transporting the pressure to make a flow the faucet water source is a reservoir or a pumping station that around it remember a pump provides enough pressure for the water to travel through the pipes definitely yes a switch electrical source is power generating station definitely yes a generator provides the pressure for the electrical equipment to travel through the electrical conductors or wires these needs to be understood all together so what is uh, to be kept in mind we need to keep in mind three factors what are they made up of three factors remember these three factors that is very important what is it made made up of what is the temperature and if possible its size so electrical electricity travels where in closed circuit this is what the closed circuit is all about it absolutely if you want to go around it this is what the closed circuit is all about normally through the conductor shock results when the body becomes a part of this electricity if there is a human being that comes around in the contact all together absolutely this is what the body will come comprises of and typically occurs when both the wires are energized circuits or one wire of the energy circuit and there is a grounding effect comes around it and the person gets electrocuted at times fatally so that needs to be understand how shock occurs a metallic part in contact with the energized wire while the person is in contact with the ground so the person becomes the conductor the most frequent the most frequent causes of electrical injuries and deaths are contact with power lines lack of grounding protections or ground fault protection path to grounding missing altogether or discontinuous absolutely people in in search of basically reducing their cost they play with the lives of the human being equipment not used in a manner prescribed absolutely they are not working as for the sop mentioned altogether and improper use of extension of flexible cause thereby these are these are the five things that needs to be kept in mind while designing it contact with the power lines lack of ground fault protection path to ground missing or discontinuous equipment not used in a mat manner prescribed and last but not the least is improper usage or abuse of extension of electrical cord so let us understand the types of electrical hazard first and foremost thing the major thing is short circuit next is the series circuit or parallel circuit that comes around it so we'll talk about uh, the series circuits or the parallel circuit subsequently let us understand short circuit a soft circuit is a low resistance path this is what i said in 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 uh, electrical wire if there is something called this resistance and this is a low resistance path that comes around it 
usually made unintentionally that that bypasses the part of the circuit this can happen when two base coil touches each other and if there are basically we have a coil which comes around it and probably there is another coil that works around in a separate fashion so it might get entangled and this is where the short circuit might happen this so now we'll talk about the series circuit remember this is the volt and this is the resistance that comes around it we have to understand the series circuit very clearly the same current flows through all component definitely yes the total voltage across the circuit is the sum of the voltage across each components when i say about the each components each nodes and things like that so there is same voltage out here out in this part of the node this this part of the node this absolutely you name it and we have it and the total resistance is the sum of the total resistance on the component and the wire that comes around it remember in this particular part the wire gets stressed every corner the wire gets stressed so voltage is v1 plus v2 plus v3 a different part that you can talk about is similarly is r1 uh, r is equal to resistance is equal to r1 r2 so parallel circuits definitely yes we have done the short circuit the series circuits and the parallel circuit comes around it so we need to understand all together smaller wires connect parallel with the same voltage but different amount of current flows through it and depending upon the resistance of the individual wire so you remember understand the mere fact that there is a thick wire and there is a very small wire so see that then it the amount of voltage that passes from this particular current the resistance it faces and the amount of voltage the same amount of voltage if it is passed through this kind of current which is a smaller thing which is a thinner thing what kind of resistance is going to go around it so this is what we need to understand to avoid such an hazard look always for the overhead power lines and buried power lines this will be an indicator and if possible please 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 post warning sign contact utilities for buried power lines location stay at least 10 feet away from overhead power line now the other thing that needs to be kept in mind is always use a double insulated tools and equipment distinctively marked yes no doubt about it uh, i keep on saying that safety better better be safe than be sorry uh, so using tools and equipment according to the instructions included in the listing labeling and certification ground all power supply system electrical circuits and electrical equipment frequently inspected electrical systems to ensure that the path to ground is continuous visually inspect all electrical equipment before usage take any defective equipment out of the services that come here now we'll talk about the frequently inspected electrical systems to ensure that the path to the ground is continuous visual inspect all electrical equipment before use now this visual inspection is a must because you know just by a glance and just by observing you can understand if certain things are missing or there are certain equipment which might have burned down because of high temperature and so on and so forth so use non conducting wood always probably rubber as your um, uh, foot covering always use extension cords that are with three wires the three wires usually are red black or should i say green and yellow so the way you want to go around it please utilize such kind of extension cords that comes around because that means things have been earth, earthing is up with this i come to an end of this presentation thank you for watching this video